Dream Show, taking your business from seed to sampling to towering giant with your hosts, best-selling author and business growth experts, Noah Fleming and Sean Beltman. This is the only show that gives you proven, pragmatic, and immediately applicable business growth strategies every week in 15 minutes or less. Here's Noah and Sean. Hello, everybody. We're back. It's Noah Fleming with my co-host on our awesome podcast, Mr. Sean Velvin. Sean, how are you today? Noah, I couldn't be better if I were twins. <laughs> so I like that. So, Sean, you also you're my co-author, uh, my co-host, but you're also my co-author in the fabulous book "Dealing with Difficult Customers." which is likely out by the time you're hearing this. Um, and one of the things we talked about in that book, Sean, which I think is worth talking about today, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but when companies that we work with are dealing with a dissatisfied, a disgruntled, an angry customer, is that there's often this feeling that, you know, trying to deal with these people or handle them or care for them can be a lot like, as you put it in our book so brilliantly, trying to juggle chainsaws while tightrope walking. Uh, and I don't know if that was your line or somewhere, something you got somewhere. Can you elaborate on that? You know, I honestly don't know. I, I may have picked it up somewhere, but I had that image in my head of somebody trying to do the chainsaw tightrope walking and, uh, it, it's definitely true to the feeling that that you and I have heard a lot from, um, you know, from frontline staff about what it's like for them to be thrown to the wolves and dealing with difficult, dissatisfied, angry customers. There, there's a wonderful line from uh, an old Kevin Spacey movie called The Big Kahuna, where one character says, oh, I get it. You're throwing me into the water to see if I can swim. <laughs> And the more experienced characters, no, 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 we're throwing you off the cliff to see if you can fly. And, you know, it's, it's the feeling that a lot of people seem to get that deer in headlights look. Uh, because let's face it, in many organizations, there's not a lot of training for how to deal with angry or dissatisfied customers. You know, they, they try to do it at the hiring process rather than having an internal process uh, that effectively trains people. Has that been your experience as well? It, absolutely. And so, you know, you you mentioned a key point there, which is is it's not something that there's an internal process for dealing with, but we actually have an internal invention uh, intervention that we've used with clients successfully and that we talk about in the book in great detail. But I think it's worthwhile for our listeners today that we talk a little bit more about that. And one of the things that we advocate is something called a corporately shared script book. And uh, not in the, quote, scripting sense that you might be feeling, you know, in old school sales where there's a very specific script, but at least having a script book that's corporately shared, again, for any of your customer facing people in sales marketing or customer service that gives them the best or at least most appropriate response to a specific situation or challenge or a thing client a client said. And just, I'm going to give you a second to chime in here, Sean, in a minute, but one of the things that we like to do is to make sure that this is a living and breathing document, meaning it's continuously being updated. So when we have calls with sales teams, we'll often ask a question like, what was the most interesting her thing you heard this week? And if we start to hear that same thing being repeated, then that's something that will go in the script book. So, Sean, uh, can you chime in on the corporately shared script book and how you believe that that's a powerful tool for dealing with this, you know, juggling with uh, chainsaws on a tightrope phenomenon? For sure. And I, I think I'd just like to start the way that I start in explaining this when we're bringing it to clients is that in any interaction – uh, between, especially between angry customers and your frontline staff, but even between new prospects or longtime clients, most of the time there's two types of communication. There's the actual words, the explicit communication, and then there's what the meaning is, the implicit communication. So a lot of times, you know, customers will be yelling at you for something, but that's not really the reason that they're yelling at you. And similarly, the response that you give is also meant to convey other messages. So an easy example of this is that it really doesn't matter what you say to an angry customer 
unless they're able to calm down and see the person they're talking to as a human being rather than an agent of Satan from your evil corporation <laughs> that's trying to take all their money and stamp the joy out of their life. You know, so it doesn't matter if your script is perfect and the words are perfect. The communication behind it has to be, I understand, you know, I feel bad for your experience, and here's what I'm trying to do to help you. Um, and so, you know, when you and I talk about script books so often, a lot of it does come back to what's the implicit message that we're trying to convey in this circumstance. And then we come up with a few examples with the people in order to figure out what best conveys that. Right. But in, in what you just said there is very interesting. I mean, you're talking about empathy, right? I mean, that's something, uh, again, it's, it's not something we can train people to be more empathetic, at least I don't think, but we can at least talk to them about the intent behind the script book and to make sure that they first listen to a customer, to hear them out, uh, and then to empathize with them and then have a process for responding to it. So I think, you know, in sales, one of the things is it's, it's very, easy to go on the negative really quickly if somebody gives you an, an objection. And so a lot of times companies will have a script book to deal with every objection. And I don't think that's what we're referring to here. W would you agree? Uh, I would. And I think it's shifting to sales for a discussion for a moment is actually really helpful here because this happens much more often. Uh, and the sales side is much more interesting to many of the people that, that we've talked to. Um, because there's a lot more revenue to be had if you can help your sales team get a better sense of how to handle objections. And you can hear my air quotes there. Um, you know, one of the things that you and I both know, know, and we spend a lot of time talking about is that an objection is never the real objection. When somebody says to you, I'd love to, but I don't have the time. And I'm still confused. What, what does that even mean? We all have the same amount of time. Right, I, I don't have the time. Just means you're not a high enough priority. Uh, similarly, you know, I, I don't have the budget. Means you're not a high enough priority. And so, recognizing what people mean in objections helps you better understand what kind of uh, rebuttals or you know conversational tennis lobs are best suited to that. Because if you hear, I don't have the time. And you immediately think, oh, okay, I'll come back when you have the time. <laughs> then you really have missed the whole point of, you know, the underlying point of that objection. And so you're absolutely right when we talk about the script book isn't to give you the word for word what you're saying in this situation. But it is to help you understand what's the implicit message that they're conveying and what is the implicit message that you want to convey back with your response and what are some examples of how to do that successfully? So I think there's, you know, two other key points here, which you just brought up. One is, again, being ready and prepared. Uh, you talked about it from a sales perspective. And one of the lines that we've often talked about has come from my uh, business coach, Alan Weiss, who, you know, we've both read many books by. Uh, he's got fabulous stuff uh, from a consulting point of view. And he often says that, if you're not prepared to answer, you know, the likely one of three things that a client or a prospective client can say to you in a specific situation, then you're negligent, right? And you almost deserve to lose the business. It's kind of harsh, but it's true. So, for example, somebody might say, your price is too high. Somebody might say what you just said. I don't have the time to meet you. Somebody said, we, have, we haven't had time to implement. Whatever it is, you need to be prepared for those things. So, I think that's point one. Point two is another thing we often advocate, which is something a little bit outside of this discussion right now, but we talk about that as the skeletons in the closet protocol, which came from another book, uh, and the, the name is escaping me right now. Do you, do you know it, Sean? Uh, it's called No Lie, Truth is the Ultimate Sales Tool. Right. And so the skeleton protocol was all about helping your people understand what the most common objections were and being able to address those early. Uh, and that's just sort of a side note, but I'm going to get back to the script book in a minute here. Um, Sean, do you want to jump in here on the script book again? Uh, I do. So I, I want to shift us back to another context or example where it's really useful and you know, to play off of what you said there is there's going to be some objections that are likely to come up. And if you can't address them or if you're not expecting them, then you're negligent. 
And, you know, so I think if, if we're looking at retail, for example, uh, you have to expect that there's going to be times when people try to return things outside of the warranty period. They're going to try to return items that are in bad condition that have been used. They're going to tell you their price is too high or that they saw this in a coupon somewhere across town, but they don't have it with them. But trust us, you need to take 50 percent off. There's a lot of things they're going to tell you. And, you know, you as a company should be able to prepare your people for these things with what the customer is likely to say and how you want them to handle it. And so it's not, this is something, again, we wrote about in the book, but it's not always a specific, here's the issue, here's the the one specific response that we must answer at any time a customer has this problem. But what we do suggest is that a good corporately shared script book might look at a specific issue and then share a number of potential ways to respond to that, uh, specifically based on like you said, the the customer's intent, the customer's, uh, you know, anger level or frustration level, there might be five or 10 ways to deal with that. And that living, breathing script book gives our people that that real living uh, tool that helps them prepare for these more often. Exactly. And if nothing else, it gives them something better to say than no, you're wrong, or you're lying, or I'm too busy for this, right? Which, you know, we'd hope they would never say, but you and I have both seen instances of each of those in various situations. And I think, you know, we've also seen the extreme too, because of the quote, again, air quotes, Sean, but the, you know, the Zappos phenomenon, which is let's just do everything and anything to make the customer happy, which again is not the best approach because a lot of companies end up giving away the farm uh, because they're constantly making the same mistakes. They're constantly dealing with the same issues. And so there's just this inherent belief that, you know, nowadays we just need to do whatever the customer expects to make them happy. But that's not always the case either. Exactly. You know, and you've written a lot about this, Noah, that the a lot of the Zappos tactics works really well for Zappos, but Zappos has an entire history and culture and everything else behind it that makes it work there. Pulling one of those out and implementing it in your company doesn't necessarily work so well. Um, and you know, to bring us back to this idea of of the script book and what you can do in your companies. You know, I really do urge everybody listening to take a moment and think about what are the most common scenarios that might happen uh, to your people that you're worried about. You know, so if you're primarily worried about sales or marketing efforts right now, are you worried when somebody tells your salespeople, we don't have time or I don't have budget or maybe let me think about it? Or are you drop dead rock solid confident that your salespeople know what those mean and know how to respond in a way that keeps you well positioned. If you're in retail, what are the complaints that might come up uh, or the difficult customer situations that might come up and how confident are you that you've done everything you can to train your people how you want them to handle the most common ones? So I think that is a perfect spot to get into our weekly challenge. And I think you've sort of summed up the challenge uh, really clearly, but let me just frame it a little bit differently for everybody. Pick two to three people in your organization, in some department, wherever, and test them with the same situation. So test them with the same situation. Sean gave examples there from retail. Uh, you know, we can help you come up with examples for your business. But test them and see how are people able to respond. Are the responses uh, clear, congruent? Do they make sense with your, you know, your corporate ethos? Uh, are the way, are they responding the way they should respond? And again, use the same situation across a number of people and see, you know, what sort of congruency you get in the different responses. Would you like to add anything to the challenge there? Uh, no, I think that's a great summation of it. I think it's a really pointed challenge, and I urge everybody to to take us up on this. Do it within your organization and let us know what you find. So shameless plug today. Uh, again, I mentioned earlier, Sean is my co-author, and we wrote about this in great detail 
in our book, Dealing with Difficult Customers. And so you should pick that up if you're interested in learning more about the Corporately Shared Script Book. We can certainly help you build one. It is a truly remarkable and powerful tool. Uh, It will change your relationships with your customers. And again, try the challenge. That's the whole point of these challenges. You get them in under 15 minutes or less, and they're poignant, they're powerful, and they will generate results, and you'll learn something. So thanks again for listening. Again, as always, check us out on, check my website out, noahfleming.com. Get in touch with us. And please, we always appreciate your reviews for our podcast. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Noah. Take care, everyone. Thanks for listening. Be sure to join us each and every week for another great episode of The Evergreen Show with your hosts, Noah Fleming and Sean Beltman. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time on The Evergreen Show. Evergreen Show.